Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Hello everyone and welcome to your English class. In our lesson today, we will continue with our second unit, which is titled, Take My Advice. Our lesson today is the pronunciation and the conversation part in your books, page 22 and 23. All you need for the lesson today is your books, page 22 and 23. For the lesson today, a sheet of paper and a pen to take down your notes. Let's get started with our lesson. It is actually in, the, your, in your books on page 90, we're having this exercise about the two, three word verbs. Exercise A. Complete the conversation with the correct two or three word verb. Put the pronoun object in the correct, uh, in the correct position. So you are having the two or three word verb you are going just to change the order of the proposition, or let's say about the pronoun. A conversation between Sam and Mel. Sam says, I hate cleaning the garage. I put off it as long as I can. So I put, I put it off. Every time I have to do it, I will put off it, put it off. It means postpone it. I say, I will do it later. I put it off as long as I can. There is a lot of junk in it. How do you put up with it? Here, how do you put up with it? How do you put up with it? Do you really need, all, uh, need it all? Why don't you throw away it? How can we add the it in here? Why don't you throw it away to discard them? Just throw them away. That's not easy to do. Just throw away it. Look at all the footballs. Throw away it. We will use throw it away in here. I can't throw away them. I can't throw them away. They remind me of all those games. They are important for me. Let's notice the pronoun in here. We're having the et, it comes at in the middle between the particle and the other one which is the verb. Notice the them and the et in here. Okay, that was for the grammar lesson. For our lesson today, by the end of today's lesson, you will be able to identify the stress in multi-word verbs. Where are we going to stress, the beginning or the end? and also answer some questions based on a conversation. And by the end, you will use some real talk phrases correctly. Ready? Let's get together. Okay, at the beginning, let's revisit the idea of a multi-word verb. Not one word like put, we're having many words that will give you a multi-word verb. We've discussed two word verbs and three word verbs. Speaking about put, what do we mean by the word put? Like, this is a pen, I will put it on the table. Table, Put, to place something. However, if we're saying put off, can you put off something? What do we mean by put off? Put off means to postpone. I will put off the meeting. Put off the class, I will do it later. Also, we're having put up with. Can you put up with, a, 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 let's say, a bad situation? Putting up is to tolerate. Also, we're having to put on. I am at the shopping, I am shopping, and I, I have something, maybe a t-shirt, I want to try it on, whether it's my size or not. So, trying close. Also, put out, when we're having fire, I want to stop it, so is to stop fire. Let's compare the first one, put, with put off, put up with, put off, put on, and out. They are having total different meaning. So, when you are adding, it, when it is a two or three word verb, multi-word verb, so we're speaking about, about a different meaning. Okay, and let's go uh, into here and we will say like put off, this is the verb, and the other one is the proposition get, get along with, and we're having also throw, throw away. 
the also put is put up with. The first part, which is the put, get, throw, and put, these are what we call them, that we all can agree we call it the verb, the action itself. How about the second part? It could be a proposition or an adverb, like here, off, along with, in a three-word verb, away, or up with. These we call them actually the particle, because it could be an adverb, and it could be mostly the proposition. So the verb and the particle. Okay, multi-word could be whether a noun or a verb. So it could be a verb and it could be a noun. Let's compare them together. Like when I say, work out, take away. And it could be as well as a noun when I say, work out and take away. How can I differentiate between when it is a verb and when it is becoming a noun? Sometimes the same word. Sometimes it works as a verb, the other times it will work as a noun. So the difference is going to be on the stress. So we're having a multi-word verb and a multi-word noun. A multi-word verb like work out and take away. However, the multi-word noun is like when you say work out and take away. So these are the differences. Why do we study such a thing? When you study such a thing, it's very important when you are pronouncing it. Why? Because you will express yourself better. The listener is going to know whether you are using the verb or you are using the noun. Are you speaking about the verb or the noun? Also, you will sound much more like a native speaker. You will sound better. So, and here we're having these two words, which is take and away. One of them is a noun and the other one is actually a verb. Let's listen and you will find out which one is the noun and which one, which, which part is actually stressed. Let's listen together. Take away. Take away. You have noticed in here? The first word, we're having the second part, which is in bold, is more, is highlighted or stressed. However, in the first one, the second one, we're having the first part is stressed. Different when it is a verb or it is actually a noun. However, how can I stress? How can I stress? And which part should I stress? You have to stress the right part, whether the first or the last part. If it is the last part, so it is the verb. Then you have to link it, to link between the particle and the verb. Link them together. Do not put a schwa in the middle, like take away. No, it's take away. Okay? Just like it in, in here, turn down and put up. Let's listen and how the particle, which is down and up, is much more highlighted or stressed. Let's listen together. Turn down. Put up. So as you have noticed, it is not turn down. No, turn down. The down is higher, or let's say it's more stressed. However, for the put up, we'll say put up. The up is more stressed than the verb. So it is turn down and put up. Let's, c let's continue in here, and we will have the word put up. How are you going to stress it? You, we, uh, you will, at the, at the beginning, you will link them. So put up, put up, then you will stress the second part. So it will be put up, not the first one, it will be the second one. So stress the right part because it's a verb, it will be, the second part will be stressed. And also do not forget to link. We will link them as if they were one word, then we are going to stress the second part. Okay, now, in, uh, now I want you to choose which part should be stressed. Is it like the pass or away, the burn or down, and until the end? Let's listen and you will, you will tell which part is much more stressed. I've only passed out one time in my life. The house burned down last week. I never fall for her tricks. I passed the homework out to my students. She is coming down with a cold. 
So as you have noticed that all of these are verbs, so we are actually stressing or highlighting much more on that particle, which is out in here, down in the second one, for in here, out the particle, and down. So these are much more highlighted, or let's say they are stressed, you will say them higher and louder. Okay, so these they are. Now let's go into your books on page 22. We're having the practice part, listen and practice for each one of these verbs. Let's listen together. Put off. I put off my new diet. Turn down. I don't want to turn down a friend who asks for help. Put up with. Ahmed has put up with the noise for a long time. Now he has had enough. So as you have noticed in here, we're having them in here. Uh, we're having them in here. The off is much more higher. And we're having down, which is the particle, and up. So it is put up. Then we're having turn down. Down is higher. And put up with, it will be put up with. That second one is going to be higher. Or the last part is higher or much more stressed. Now in your books, page 23, the conversation part, I want you to scan the whole thing and find out, scan the conversation and find out the two and the three word verbs. Try, give yourself a, 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 like one minute to scan the whole thing, find two or three word verbs. Which verbs have you found which are like two or three word verbs? I have found here, coming up. Also, I have found come over. Also, I found give up. And also, the, wor the two-word verb find out. Which one should be much more stressed or higher, uh, will be stressed? We will stress the particles which are the up, over, and out. Let's listen to them while you are trying to notice the second part as being stressed. Let's listen together. Coming up. Come over. Give up. Find out. So as you have noticed, it is coming up. We're having next come over. Also, give up and find out. The second part is stressed to change, so you can change the meaning from come into coming up. Okay. Now let's go to the conversation part, and in here, let's try to scan the conversation one more time, and this time you will tell me who are the speakers in our conversation today. The speakers in here are actually Hussein and Muhammad. Who are they? Are they friends, siblings, brother and sister? Who are they? They look like that they are friends from the conversation. What pictures do we have? How many actually? We're having two pictures. Here, we've got two pictures. The first one is for two friends. They look like as if they were reading or studying together. And the second one is for a cell phone, a mobile phone or a cell phone. Looks like they are discussing the idea of studying and calling and communicating. Let's go together in here. And we will listen to the conversation between these two, uh, Hussein and Muhammad. You will listen to the conversation and you will tell what is the problem. We're having a topic, which is the problem. What problem are they trying to find a solution for? So what's the problem? What's the matter with them? Let's listen together so you will, you will get to know. Hey, Muhammad, you look upset. What's the matter? I'm feeling down. It's all these exams coming up. There's so much pressure and everyone's calling me all the time to ask about this or that. When I'm out they're constantly calling me on my cell phone to ask for help. If I say I can't speak, they want to know what time I will be available and where I will be so they can come over or call again. 
Why don't they call someone else? You ought to talk to them and explain that they can't expect you to be free to help everyone all the time. You have work to do as well. I tried talking to them, but they say I'm being selfish and looking out for myself and nobody else. Oh, I give up. They probably think you don't need to study. You know it all anyway. Seriously? Of course, I need to study. I don't remember everything we've done. Do you get calls from classmates? Sure. They're pretty nervous about calling you. So they call me first to find out what kind of mood you're in. To be honest, I would be really happy if you talked to them. I don't know what to say to them anymore. So, what is the problem in here? Who's having the problem actually? The problem is with Muhammad. He is the one who is reporting the problem. What's wrong with him? He's actually receiving many phone calls from other classmates, not from Hussein, from the other classmates. Okay? So, let's listen one more time to the conversation, and this time you will come up with the answers for these two questions. What is Muhammad's problem? Summarize it in two sentences. And what does Hussein want Muhammad to do? Let's listen to the conversation between the two of them. Hey, Muhammad, you look upset. What's the matter? I'm feeling down. It's all these exams coming up. There's so much pressure and everyone's calling me all the time to ask about this or that. When I'm out, they're constantly calling me on my cell phone to ask for help. If I say I can't speak, they want to know what time I will be available and where I will be so they can come over or call again. Why don't they call someone else? You ought to talk to them and explain that they can't expect you to be free to help everyone all the time. You have work to do as well. I tried talking to them, but they say I'm being selfish and looking out for myself and nobody else. Oh, I give up. They probably think you don't need to study. You know it all anyway. Seriously? Of course, I need to study. I don't remember everything we've done. Do you get calls from classmates? Sure. They're pretty nervous about calling you, so they call me first to find out what kind of mood you're in. To be honest, I would be really happy if you talked to them. I don't know what to say to them anymore. Okay, so what is Muhammad's problem? What's problem he's going through? He is actually, his problem is that his classmates keep calling him to ask questions or ask him to help them prepare for the exam. So everyone is calling Muhammad so he can answer, th answer them for questions they have for the upcoming exam. Now, Hussein is receiving some calls as well, but what does Hussein want Muhammad to do? He gave him some advice. What, his, what was his advice? He wants Muhammad to talk to their classmates and explain that he needs to prepare for the exams as well. He said, just be honest with them and tell them that I don't have time and I want to study as well. Okay, so here, what do you think, uh, what do you think Muhammad should do? Let's try to give advice. We, in our place, we will give advice to Muhammad. If you have a friend, we are, we will put ourselves in Hussein's position. And we will say, what should he do? For me, if I have a friend who's receiving too many calls, I will say, he ought to talk to his classmates. You ought to talk to them and let them know about your situation. Also, we can say, he should clarify to them that he is busy. Tell them, you should explain, clarify, make it clear for them that I am busy and I have to prepare for the exams as well. Also, he could ask Hussein to talk to them for him. If he can't talk himself, so he could, we're having here, he could ask Hussein, can you do it for me, Hussein, and talk to them instead of me. Okay, how about the real talk phrases? We're having real talk phrases are actually not a word and a meaning, 
or having certain words, phrases, that they will have another meaning. Maybe more like informal, more like idiomic expressions. Muhammad said that I am feeling down. What do we mean when we say feel down? Is it like down? How does he feel? When you feel down, are you happy? No. When you feel down, feeling depressed. When someone is depressed, he is not feeling happy. He's depressed. Not happy, sad, in a blue mood. All these exams coming up, there is so much pressure and everyone is calling me all the time. The Muhammad said, I try talking to them, but they say I am being selfish and looking out for myself. Selfish and looking out for myself. What is looking out for, some, for oneself? It means like not care, not care about others and being selfish. You only care about yourself. You don't care about others. You are selfish, not selfless. Then Hussein said, to be honest, I would be really happy if you talked to them. When do you say to be honest? To be honest, I will tell you something. To be honest, it's an expression that we use to make the statement stronger. Or I will tell you something, it might make you sad. You might not like it. So, it is an expression that will make my sentence or my statement stronger. Please, to be I will say, to be honest, I want you to answer or take their calls. Muhammad might not like it. However, this is the reality. I try to use these words. Feel down, looks out for himself, and to be honest. When you try to do something exciting, when you feel down, look out for himself or to be honest when you feel down when you're not feeling happy try to do something that will make you happy we all have to work together to be honest earth won't be a safe place to live in if everyone looks out for himself we have to cooperate to work together and i have to be honest i will tell everyone that we have to work together to make my statement stronger, I started with to be honest. Okay, about the conversation in your books, page 23. What is Muhammad's problem with his classmates? Those uh, friends who are studying in the same, same class. His problem is they keep calling him to ask him to help them prepare for the exams. They keep calling him to ask questions. Then. What advice does Hussein give, Muhammad, give Muhammad? He told him, Muhammad ought to talk to them, explain that, and explain that he has to work and study as well, so they can't expect him to, uh, to be free all the time. So you ought to talk to, to, to our classmates. Number three, why does Hussein think their classmates keep on calling Muhammad? Why they insist to call Muhammad? They insist to call Muhammad because they think that he knows everything and doesn't need to study. He's a good student, he knows it all already, and he doesn't need to study. Why do the other students keep calling Hussein? They're, they're calling Muhammad as well as Hussein. Why they are calling Hussein to ask for about the exam? Not really. They are calling to find out what kind of mood Muhammad is in before they call him. So they want to call Muhammad, however, they want to make sure that he's in a good mood and he's free by, by now. So is he free by now? Is he in a good mood? Can we call him? Then how does Hussein feel? What does he want Muhammad to do? Is he happy about receiving calls for Muhammad? We will say that he, he, he is fed up with people calling him and has run out of excuses he wants Muhammad to talk to their classmates and explain that he needs time to prepare before the exams as well. So his classmates are making him busy as well. Please, Muhammad, talk to them and tell them that you have no answers for them or just take their calls. I am fed up and because I'm receiving your calls. What about you? What do you think? What do you think the best way to ask for a favor? Let's put ourselves in 
the classmates position or shoes we will say that the best way to uh, to ask for a favor may be texting sending him a message or trying to meet him in class in the class or at school to ask him for a favor keep calling others and bothering and annoying them is not always a good idea okay for your homework i want you to imagine that you wear hussein we're not Muhammad, we're not receiving the, call, the calls for ourselves, we are in the position of Hussein. What would you do? I'm receiving many calls from everyone, they're asking me about another friend, not for me. Imagine that you were Hussein, what would you do? Okay, this is for your homework, I guess that is it for, the, for today, and thank you so much for your time.